In this video, we're going to talk about knee pain at night. We're going to talk about what causes it. And we're going to talk about simple ways you can start to fix your knee pain at night so you aren't lying in bed awake with this freaking knee bugging you all day night. So if you're ready, let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. This video is inspired by an email I got from a viewer named Ed who was asking about knee pain that his wife was getting at night. My wife injured her knee years ago. She's mobile and does exercises to strengthen and relax the muscles, but there's some impingement. She's working on that. But the question is this, why does the full thing suddenly ache in the middle of the night? The leg can suddenly burn waking her. She uses Arnica before bed and that can help and using a vibrating massage thing relaxes the muscles, but often the pain suddenly flares up, but only at night. Asking doctors and our chiropractor who is a really good guy causes extreme mumbling and evasiveness. Is there some secret? So Ed, thank you very much for the question about your wife's knee and why the leg may just start to burn at night. There is no secret. There's just a lot of people being willfully blind to phenomena that happen to all of us. Before we go any further, I just want to ask you, what is going on with your knee pain at night? Is it happening every night, just once a week, every now and then? Drop me a comment down below. When you're dealing with something like knee pain at night, you may be tempted to fall into the typical Western medical trap of attributing your problems to something like arthritis. This can be very problematic because it often yields no productive strategies and is often completely illogical. Some very well-intentioned doctors might say something to you like this. Um, well, you're old and the joint's worn out, so uh, in the daytime you might be using it too much and then it just has a delayed response so you start to hurt later. Or they might tell you something like, that pain in your knee is a sign that the cartilage is worn out so you might need to take more pills that'll help you build the cartilage. But then why would it only hurt at night when I'm not actually bearing any weight on my knee? Oh, um, well that's uh, because the inflammation when the uh, load is off the joint, then uh, everything can, um, it can inflame, you see. If you talk to enough doctors, you'll ultimately find that all of them have different weird evasions and rationales for why they're telling you that you should rest. But if you're very lucky, you'll run into a doctor who says something like this. Sometimes doing more exercise for the muscles around the knee might actually help reduce the effects of the arthritis in the joint. And if you find a doctor like that, at least he's telling you something somewhat useful. And we're gonna talk about why that might actually be useful if we just ignore the part about the arthritis. Now you might already be saying, who does this guy think he is dismissing arthritis as a possible cause of my joint pain? The answer is I'm just a random guy on the internet who likes to read literature about arthritis and fix his own body. There are actually tons of studies that show whether you look at the hips, the knees, the spine, or the shoulders, what you see in terms of arthritis and damage in x-rays and MRIs has no correlation to actual symptoms of pain and immobility. But for some reason, that hasn't affected the level of confidence doctors and surgeons talk about arthritis as a cause of joint pain. So instead of going down their weird fantasy land, unscientific rabbit hole of arthritis and needing surgery, let's talk about the ATM theory. ATM stands for always think muscles. When something in your body hurts or doesn't move well, let's think about muscles and focus on muscles because muscles are what move your bones. This is a fundamental thing to understand about the human body and it's something that doctors and surgeons seem to not understand. Muscles are responsible for the position of your bones in space. Without muscles, bones cannot change their position in space. Without muscles, you're just flat on the floor, unable to go anywhere. So if you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s, and you feel like your knee is hurting at night, I want you to be looking out for not arthritis, but for this other diagnosis that starts with an A. The diagnosis is called I. AII stands for atrophy induced immobility. If you look at your thighs and notice that there's not a lot of meat on this bone, there's no muscle on the front, the sides, or the back, then you are probably suffering from IE. Don't, don't feel bad if you have IE. Don't, don't feel bad, it's okay. Unless you've suffered through something horrendously traumatic like my friend Boney McBonerson here, 
you still actually have muscle tissue in your legs. It just may be extremely underdeveloped. When you go to bed at night, those very weak and atrophied muscles are going into a state of even more weakness as they relax and get ready for the night. So why would that cause pain and discomfort at night? To understand this, you need to appreciate that the human body has a bunch of systems in place to make sure we are able to respond to its needs. When everything is working well and all our needs are met, we don't really feel any alarm bells going off. But if your stomach is empty for too long, you start to feel some painful signals inside your gut. If you consume something that's very clearly not good for you, you're going to feel the effects and you may feel yourself with stomach pain or you may feel yourself throwing up. If you try to hold your breath for as long as you can, you may notice some weird, alarming, panicky, burning sensations going on in your face and in your chest and throat. None of these sensations and warning signals are particularly fun and comfortable, but these signals are desirable in that they give us a chance to respond to the situation in a way that's productive and frankly keeps us alive. So we have these signals in place to let us know when we need to attend to some need. Boney McBonerson here totally ignored his hunger signals for way too long. If we look at joint pain from this perspective, it gives us a lot of productive strategies that actually work. And that brings us to the idea of SAIL. SAIL is S-A-E-L, which is short for strength at every length. When you're thinking of getting rid of joint pain, you want to remember that muscles need to be functional in a lot of different positions. That's what I mean by strength at every length. You don't want muscles to just be really strong at only one specific position. If I'm here and I have a bicep muscle that's great at only working here in this angle, I'm not gonna be happy because my shoulder and elbow are not gonna feel good. Your knee muscles need to be developed in a way that's balanced all around the joint and that allows for full range and full function in a bunch of different angles. If the muscles around your knee are too weak, then guess what? Atrophy aches. Hey, Boney and I wanna take a quick second to say a big thanks to Gabriel for the $150 donation via PayPal. Thank you so much. If you wanna support this channel too, use the PayPal or Patreon links in the description box or use the join or thanks button that you'll find here on YouTube. So when you're lying in bed at night spooning your spouse and your knee starts to act up or your leg starts to burn, you want to be thinking about the muscles that are in your thigh that may be getting too weak and too relaxed while you're sleeping. This is gonna be way more productive than thinking, oh, I guess I've just gotta live with this for the rest of my life. Should we show them the exercises now? Are you sleeping? So now I'm going to take you through two different exercises that I think will be very helpful for you to start incorporating into your life so that your thigh muscles, meaning the hamstrings and the quads can get a little bit stronger. And at the end of this video, I'm going to link to some more videos that will help you build more strength for your legs. For this first exercise, I just want you next to a wall, left side pointing towards the wall, left leg is going to be in front, right foot is going to be behind. Then you're going to twist so your hands are on the wall. You don't have to make this a really hard, crazy twist, especially if you don't feel like you can do that. You can just have a little bit of a twist here, move your foot a little bit closer. You're just using the wall to help you balance here. Then you're going to go into a hinge, meaning you're bending at the hips. So right here, we're bending here to feel a stretch going down through the hamstrings and into the glute here. So you're here, just however much bend you can, or twist you can get, or you know, less, right? You can just move your hand here if this is as much as you can get. And we're gonna be feeling that stretch through that left hamstrings. And then to come back up, you're gonna try to use the left hamstrings, okay? So your hands are there to help you balance, even help give a little bit of assist to help you crawl back up if you need the help, but really focus mentally on firing these muscles to pull you back up. The right leg is just there as support, right? It's just helping you balance. And then once you're here again, as far as you can go down, hang out there and then fire those hamstrings, the left hamstrings to lift yourself back up. Now, the reason I'm having you do this is because like Ed mentioned with his wife, sometimes things can get tweaked. He mentioned, he used the word impingement, which 
to me sounds like she gets some kind of a pinch somewhere around her knee. And that can happen when the muscles around the knee are not developed in balance. And one area that I've noticed for myself and many other people that gets really kind of cranky or stiff and tight are the lateral hamstrings. So we don't often do motions that twist us on top of that leg and that get this leg turned into internal rotation and then fold, right? Most of us, especially in modern life, don't even fold because our doctors told us folding is bad for our backs because they are experts apparently at, what are they experts at again? So when we add this twist and really stretch out those lateral hamstrings, we're addressing an area of stiffness and tightness and weakness that a lot of us have. And if you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, and you've just done whatever workouts you saw at the gym or whatever your uh, silver sneakers instructor showed you, you almost definitely have never done anything involving a twist while you're trying to stretch and strengthen the hamstrings. Huge added bonus to this exercise is it will help your balance because your hip muscles will now be able to function in a different range of motion than they're used to. So make sure you do this on both sides. So right side towards the wall, left foot back, twist as much as you can. If you can't go this much, it's fine. Don't twist so much, just use the wall to help you balance. You're gonna hinge, try to keep that right knee straight. Feel that stretch into the hamstrings and into the low butt, and then use the hamstrings to come back up. Okay, so we're just going down, 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 down. Stretch, 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 and then fire, fire, fire to come back up, okay? If you feel like, man, I'm really stiff when I do this, I can only go this far and it's shaking and shuddering, good job, stay there, hang out there. Breathe there, relax. See if you can get those muscles to just relax a little bit more and then fire them to come back up. What you'll find is over time, you're going to get a little more range of motion because you're gonna have a little more strength, which is gonna make you feel a lot safer in that position. What most people have normally done when they try to stretch their hamstrings is just hang there and wait for things to relax and then they never do any kind of strengthening. So then when they come back to that same hamstring stretch again, they feel like they lost all of their gains. Remember, we're trying to develop strength at every length so that you get those mobility gains. Do five to 10 of these on each side. And if you have one side that feels stiffer and or weaker, then make sure to do an extra set for that side. In general, I would suggest you just do two sets for both sides and do an extra third set for that weaker, stiffer side. And now I wanna show you how to build up some thigh muscle here. Both my parents are in their mid 70s and their thigh muscles are wasting away. So I've seen exactly what happens when you don't train these muscles to stay alive. Unfortunately, at this point, neither of my parents have the cognitive function to make really training to build muscle and relieve joint pain a top priority. But since you're watching this, you do have that cognitive function. So I'm hoping that you're able to use what I've learned from watching my parents to help yourself. This is a very basic beginner level exercise to build some knee strength. Just sit on a chair or a couch and you're just gonna lift the leg up and then you're gonna hold for a nice long contraction. Hold this as long as you can. Feel these muscles burn. Feel these muscles work. If you wanna work them even more, try to lift the leg up higher. You wanna feel those muscles complaining, quivering, and getting fatigued. Then you can let the leg relax. Go ahead and switch to the other leg while this one rests and then extend. Same thing, if you want to hold it up higher, that's great. You're gonna feel the muscles around the thigh, near the knee, all working. These are your quadriceps. They're responsible for straightening the knee. Keep holding that position. When they get tired, go ahead and let them down. That's gonna just start waking these muscles up and you can do these for 30 seconds per leg and just do two rounds of that and then a third one for the weaker side. When you are ready to do something that requires a little bit of equipment, go ahead and grab an ankle weight, stick it on your ankle, and then you can do repetitions or static holds. So a static hold would be holding it like this, just like we talked about earlier, really firing, trying to get that knee straight, lifting, lifting, or you can just do repetitions. So you can go slow and controlled, feeling these muscles work. 
If you're gonna do the static holds again, just hold it for like 30 seconds if you can, and then go ahead and relax it. If you're gonna do repetitions, then just go till you feel fatigue. Really work it, work it, work it, and then when it's tired, you feel those muscles burning, take a breather. If you do have very atrophied thigh muscles, I would encourage you to take it slow when you start adding weight. So just add a little bit of weight and don't throw 10 pounds on your ankle right away because slow is safe and fast is foolish. The goal is to gradually build strength and mass in those muscles. It's not to shock and awe your knee. If you throw 10 pounds on your ankle right away and start doing 100 repetitions, I guarantee you're gonna wake up very unhappy the next day. And you'll no longer have knee pain just at night. You'll probably have it throughout the day as well. You can pair these exercises together as a simple workout to start helping your knee health so your knees stop hurting in the middle of the night. As you stretch out some of those stiff lateral hamstring muscles and build strength there and build strength on the front of the knee, you're going to find that your knee just doesn't bother you so much. You're giving your knee muscles the blood they need, the work they need to feel like you love them. And before I forget, I wanna remind you that if you wanna build knee strength on a regular basis, one great way to do it is to just keep walking backwards for a few minutes every single day. If these exercises totally solve your knee pain, I'd love to hear about it. Leave me a comment down below. If you're looking for more ways to build your knee strength so you can live a life free of pain, then check out these videos here. If you want to support this channel, use the Patreon or PayPal links you'll find in the description box or the thanks or join buttons that you'll find here on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life should. Sure.